in this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to integrate vapi.ai with make.com. So first of all, let's take a look why we would even want to integrate those two. So first of all, because we want to trigger calls or receive inbound calls. So let's start with outbound calls. We want to, of course, be able to automatically trigger outbound calls like we're used to with make.com. But we also want to dynamically create our systems for calling different people, for example. So, for example, we want to call Daniel from our CRM. Then we want to create an assistant that knows that it's going to call Daniel and that knows all data from the CRM about Daniel. So that's what dynamically creating an assistant means and I'm going to show it to you in a second. Um, but apart from this, we also want to be able to um, receive inbound calls and then dynamically create assistance. So for example, we, someone calls our assistant that handles inbound calls and then we see, okay, we know this number, it's Daniel who's calling. Then we also want to be able to dynamically create an assistant that knows that Daniel is calling right now and that also knows different information about Daniel from the CRM. So then there's also function calling in VAPI, which happens during the call. So during the call, we can set different triggers that then trigger a function. And then in make.com, we can set up a function call listener and also create the function call response. And then after the call, we can receive end of call reports and transcripts and summaries and different information about the call. And we can also set this up with make.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the outbound calls and how to dynamically create assistance. And in future videos, I can show you how to do those three. So now, first of all, let's start with this. This is our example for the video. We have an assistant called Sarah and Sarah is working for Smile Bright Dental Care. And what Sarah does is she calls people from the CRM of Smile Bright Dental Care in order to verify whether their data is still up to date. Now this is the CRM. Now here we've got only uh, one client right now, but of course there would be much more in a real use case. We've got the phone number, we've got the name, which is Daniel, we've got the profession, he's an influencer, and we've got his city. And now Sarah is going to call Daniel on this number in order to verify if his information is still up to date. Now I have created, I've set up Sarah here so I can show the prompt to you and also so that I'm able to demonstrate why it's not possible to do this inside here and why we need make.com. So first of all, let's look at the task. You call people from your company CRM to verify if their data is still up to date. Here we've got the conversation, you say something and then you ask if they still work as an influencer and you then ask if they still live in London. And of course, when we start the call, we want Sarah to say, hello, this is Sarah from Smile Bright Dental Care. Am I speaking to Daniel? So this is the best way to start this call. But there is no way to do this inside of the VAPI interface because we can't dynamically load the state. So we can't get the name, we can't get the job or the place where they live. So you could theoretically do this with functions. So you could define f different functions that get name and um, job and location from the CRM when the call starts. And I've tried this, however, this takes a long time. So it's like Sarah calls Daniel and then she says, okay, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Am I talking to Daniel? <laughs> that's, that's not too good. We don't want this. So that's why we need to set it up the way I'm going to show you. And yeah, how to do it in make.com. It's actually a quite simple scenario. So here we simply fetch data from the CRM. In this case, those four uh, columns. And then we make an HTTP request. And this video is going to be about how to create this HTTP request. Yeah, and it's actually not that difficult. So the good thing is that we can do it all inside of vapi.ai. So here in the API reference, we can go to create a phone call and we can configure this post request where we just send some data 
to a server of api.ai and if the server receives our data this then triggers the phone call to whatever number we want to call yes that's actually quite a nice thing and um, we can configure this http request inside of vapi so we have to start with authorization here um, we can insert our api key we can find the api key in the api reference or in the, in the dashboard somewhere in vapi i'm not sure where right now but i'm sure you'll figure it out and then you simply have to put this bearer in here and then next thing we need to set up the body and here we can uh, yeah set lots of different make lots of different settings so in here we can configure everything that we can do in here and even some more things which is quite nice so here we can say okay max duration seconds so if the call takes too long it will just end I haven't put in any number here but we could specify it here um, now here we could put in an assistant ID so we could just make it this assistant however then we can't dynamically put in data so we don't want to do this for now we want to create our own assistant where we first have to specify the transcriber in this case deepgram model nova 2 language english um, then for the model for the language model we can select open ai um, yes now here we've got our prompt which is this one we can simply copy it and insert it here role is going to be assistant um, provider open ai we can use gpt 3.5 we can use gpt 4 whatever 3.5 is quick but gpt 4 is a bit better generally doesn't uh, hallucinate and generally produces better results but i'm just going to use 3.5 for this um, semantic caching enabled i put it to true most of the time but it's you can also put it to false if you like temperature um, if you reduce temperature then this might be better for um, this might make it the assistant a bit quicker might respond a bit quicker but uh, yeah. in general temperature is um, how creative your assistant is yeah you can put 3.0.0.3 or 0 0.7 or whatever just figure out the best setting for you max tokens 250 because i don't want the assistant to to create super long sentences because that would be a bit boring so yeah we limit it at 250 tokens then for the voice i've chosen 11 labs with sarah um yeah then we could make some more settings which i'm not doing in this case then recording enabled true because we want our call to be recorded end of call function enabled if we set this to true then the assistant is able to end the call itself so if the assistants decide okay um, this is the end of the phone call then it can hang up itself which i really really like i always set it to true dial keypad function enabled false because we don't want like this would be if you want to say some if you want the assistant to say press one for this press two if you want to do this then you could do it but uh, i don't know doesn't seem very modern in my opinion hipaa enabled false because if you put it to true then you don't get any recordings or transcripts etc um, background sound office i just really like it if we have some background sound makes it sound more realistic then we can um, specify the first message of our assistant um, then this one is important voicemail detection enabled always put it to false because this uh, function enables vapi to detect if the voicemail answers so if vapi makes a call and the voicemail of the person answers um, then it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a conversation with the voicemail um, if, yeah. so vapi can just hang up in this case um, it's probably a nice feature but <laughs> i had it activated for a couple of tests and then in two cases the conversation started and then in the middle of the conversation vapi just ended the call and apparently it was because of the settings so i'll just always put it to false because we really don't want this to happen um, 
end of call message so when the assistant before the assistant assistant ends the call it says goodbye whatever then we could configure a server URL for an end of call report. I might show it to you in another video. Um, here we have the number that we want to call. In this case, it's my phone number. Um, and this is also important. This is the phone ID. So this is the, the ID of the number that we want VAPI to use. Here in VAPI, under phone numbers, you can either, either buy a number inside of VAPI or import one from Twilio. I've done both, so this is from Vapi, this is from Twilio. Um, yeah, and you just need to copy this ID, and then you can use this number to make calls with your post requests. So, phone number ID. Yeah, and then we have finished creating this post request, and now we can even test it inside of Vapi. So, here we can click on send in order to test this request and see if our phone rings. Um, yeah, why not? Let's test it out. That looks good. But I'm not going to answer because we still can't load data dynamically. I'm going to show you how to do this in a second. One more thing, when you try out making those requests in here, then if something goes wrong, you can see it down here. So here now we've got HTTP status 201, um, which means that it worked. But if you would get like, if it doesn't work, then you would have, for example, 400, and then you could just yeah, see the errors here. Okay, now how do we put this into make.com? Now, in make.com, so okay, let's, let's explain, it like this, explain it like this. This is the request we're making. Here we've got the header which says authorization, bearer, and then our API key. Then content type, application, JSON, and then the data. And we basically just need to um, to do the same thing in make.com. So in make.com, we select HTTP, make a request. And then here we have the URL where the request is going to be sent to. And we can find this here. So this is this one. We just put it in here. Method post. You can see here, request post. Then headers. First header, authorization. You can just copy it from here. Authorization. And then um, the API key. And then second header, content type application slash JSON. Again, same thing is here. Body type raw, content type JSON, application slash JSON. And now here we've got the body of the request and we can simply copy it from here. So we start with the curly bracket. We do not take this thing with, we start with the curly bracket. Oh, and then, oops. then scroll down all the way and to the last curly bracket, then we copy this, and then we simply put it in here. Now I have obviously already put it in here, yeah. but now we've got this exact same thing in here. So now we have just um, recreated this request from VAPI inside of make.com, and it would already work like this. However, we want to be able to dynamically create our systems, and I'm going to show you right now what this means, because this is pretty cool. Mm. Now, here we've got our variables. This is, oh, okay, let's actually start with the number. So what number do we want to call? We want to call the number from our CRM, from like this number. So here we can simply put number and then select the phone number from Google Sheets. Yeah. Um, then first message. Hello, this is Sarah from Smilebright Dental Care. Am I speaking to? And then we have the name. So it can now say, am I speaking to Daniel? And the way this is, um, the, the reason why this is dynamic, so why we're creating this assistant dynamically is because if we put like 10 more people inside of this CRM, then it's going to call Daniel with this number and say, hello, am I speaking to Daniel? Then it's going to call Liam and say, hello, am I talking to Liam? 
and the other ones. So yeah, this is what dynamically creating an assistant means. Yes. So yeah, you have phone number. Am I speaking to Daniel? And then in here, this is the prompt. You open a prompt so that our assistant knows what to do. And here we can ask, we can tell, okay, you then ask if, oh, if they, if they still work as profession, which is going to be influencer. You then ask if they still live in London. So this is how to do that. And I think, yeah, that's it. All right, so if we run this scenario, then we're dynamically creating the assistant and this dynamically created assistant is only going to call Daniel from this number. Yeah, so I'd say, let's try it out. Let's make it run once and see what happens. That looks good. I'm getting a call. Hello, this is Sarah from Smile Bright Dental Care. Am I speaking to Daniel? Hey Sarah, yes, this is Daniel. Hello Daniel, I'm an AI assistant working for Smile Bright Dental Care. I'm calling to verify if your data is still up to date. Can you please confirm if you still work as an influencer? Hey, yes I do. Great, thank you. And do you still live in London? Yes, I do. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> that was a call. Obviously, not perfect. It should be adjusted much more if it want, if we really want to use this. But I hope, yeah, you understood the example. This is how to integrate Vapi with Make.com. If you have any questions, then feel free to let me know. Also, if you want me to make those videos, so if you want me to show you how to dynamically create assistance for inbound calls, which I explained before, or show uh, this function calling or uh, end of call reports with make.com and Vapi, then also let me know. I can show you everything. Yes, I hope you liked the video and uh, have a nice day.